Okay, I, no, I just want to make everybody comfortable here. So, uh, thank you, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, I am uh, so proud to stand with my colleagues, uh, Senator Patty Murray, who chairs the Senate Health, Education, and Labor and Pensions Committee, Chairman Bobby Scott of the Education and Labor Committee, Chairman Alma Adams of the Subcommittee on Workforce Protections, uh, as well as Representatives Norma Torres and Deborah Ross, who are uh, 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 champions. And we will be joined uh, shortly uh, with our fearless leader, Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Um, uh, we are at a watershed. Today, the Paycheck Fairness Act, a bill that has the support of every single Democratic member of the caucus and three Republicans, will pass the House of Representatives for the very, uh, for the fourth time. And maybe the fourth time is a charm. Uh, this is so. Um, uh, but for more than two decades, we have pushed and we battled to strengthen the Equal Pay Act. We launched side by side into the fray to elevate pay discrimination, to emphasize how central it impacts uh, are to working families. Uh, I cannot tell you how difficult it has been to try to break through on something so simple. Very, very simple pre premise. Working at this since 1997, when I first introduced the act, it's men and women in the same job deserve the same pay. You know, and it is a principle that we adhere to in the Congress. We come from different parts of the country, different skill sets, different educational backgrounds, different experiences, and yet we are all paid the same amount of money. And this is true in the military as well. Last month, we recognized Equal Pay Day on March 24th, which is the day in, into the year that women must work to meet the wages earned by men in the previous year. The National Committee on Pay Equity tells us at its lowest point in 1973, full-time working women earned a medium of 56.6 cents to every dollar that full-time working men earned. Today, women who work full-time year-round are paid on average only 82 cents for every dollar paid to men. The gap exists in every state, regardless of geography, occupation, education, or work patterns. Worse for women of color. Latinas are typically paid 55 uh, cents, Native American women, 60 cents. Black women, 63 cents. Asian American and Pacific Islander women are paid as little as 52 cents. Now, the issue and the environment have collided. This last year has brought out the depth of our problems, exposed existing inequalities, like women's economic insecurity at a disproportionate rate. Women have lost over 5 million jobs. And as we rebuild our economy, and as more and more American families rely on women's income, we know that the pay gap not only hurts women, but in fact, it hurts their families, families who depend on them. So we need to take transformative change. The act would very simply require employees to prove pay disparities exist for legitimate job-related reasons. It bans retaliation against workers who discuss their wages. Um, and it facilitates a wronged worker's participation in class action suits. It prohibits employers from seeking the salary history of prospective employees. Now, President Kennedy signed the Equal Pay Act nearly 60 years ago. He said it would be a first step. It affirms our determination that when women enter the labor force, they will find equality in their pay envelopes. So the Paycheck Fairness Act is our next step. 1956, um, it was uh, President Eisenhower who also talked about equal pay uh, for equal work uh, for, for women. Uh, so we have the opportunity right now to make good on a promise that presidents of both parties have made. We need to pass the legislation, seize the moment, uh, look to our Senate colleagues uh, to sign to pass it and get the president uh, uh, to, to sign it, which we know he will do. So I uh, thank you all. Now what I'd like to do is uh, I am very proud to be joined in this fight by the Senate Assistant Democratic Leader, uh, Senator Patty Murray. Uh, I like to say that she is a co-conspirator in this, <laughs> and a collaborator and a co-conspirator. Um, she has a companion bill in the Senate, has been a tireless champion for women's economic equality. 
a serious legislator, and has, we've been fighting side by side on this issue for years. She now has all 49 of her Senate Democratic colleagues on board as co-sponsor, and I know that she's going to do everything that she can to push it through the Senate. I could not ask for a better partner uh, on this issue. Senator Patty Murray. Thank you. Well, thank you so much to my great friend, Rosa DeLora, who we've worked with on so many issues, and this is one of the really important ones. I want to thank Speaker Pelosi, who will be here shortly, uh, as well as uh, all of the members of Congress who are behind me as well for their amazing support and work on this. I am really thrilled that the House is going to pass this key critical legislation, and it is something that we are all here to celebrate. It has been 50 years since Congress passed the Equal Pay Act, 50 years. But to this day, women on average are still only paid 82 cents for every dollar men make, and the wage gap, as we know, is far greater for women of color. And this pandemic, by the way, has only made things worse. The current economic and jobs crisis has set women, and in particular women of color, back even further and made just how clear and urgent it is to act. We have a responsibility to make sure women can protect themselves against wage discrimination and get the pay they deserve. And we also have a responsibility to get our economy back on track. We know if women do not recover from this pandemic, our economy is not going to recover. So it is critical that we build a, back a stronger, fairer economy and guarantee that women can challenge pay discrimination, can hold their employers accountable, and finally receive equal pay for equal work. And that's exactly what the Paycheck Fairness Act will do and exactly what Democrats have long been fighting for. Those meaningful and common sense steps the House will pass today will help eliminate the wage gap that has been so deeply harmful to women across our country and help us on our path to economic recovery. But as we celebrate this important achievement today, we know our work is not done. Each and every one of my Republican colleagues represents a state where about half the population is learning, earning less than the other half because of their gender. That should be unacceptable, regardless of whether you are a Democrat or a Republican, and it should not be controversial or remotely partisan to try and end this injustice. But it is the right thing to do for our families, for our community, and for our economy. So I am here today to urge Republicans in the Senate to join us in this critical effort to finally guarantee equal pay for equal work know that Democrats are not going to stop fighting until we get this done. So I'm delighted to be here with my House counterparts today and my good friend Bobby Scott, who has just been a champion on these issues and is representing all the men in the country to here today <laughs> <laughs> who support us in our work. You can do it, Bobby. Bobby. Thank you, Patty, and thank you for your leadership on the Health Committee on this and all, all of the other issues in our jurisdiction. And good afternoon. And I want to thank both uh, Speaker Pelosi and Chairwoman DeLauro for decades of commitment to closing the gender pay gap. In 1963, the, e the Equal Pay Act first codified the basic principle of equal pay for equal work regardless of sex. While our progress has been steady, it has been too slow. Nearly 60 years later, gender-based pay discrimination continues to rob women of their pay, the pay they deserve, and this is particularly true of women of color who face, who face the largest pay discrepancies. The COVID-19 pandemic has added a new obstacle to equal pay by driving millions of women out of the workforce, and as they return to the workforce, the gender gap could become only worse uh, because they are facing new, uh, new hiring and everything else. One important part of the Paycheck Fairness Act is its prohibition from, from employers requiring potential employees to provide their salary history 
during the hiring process. When you consider the documented history of gender-based pay discrimination, it is easy to see how widespread use of salary history only perpetuates the inequality. Um, this, uh, so this legislation will prevent existing pay disparities from being the basis for beginning salaries when women rejoin the workforce. Uh, today, the House will do its part by voting to pass this legislation, and I know that Chair Murray and, my, and our Senate colleagues will do everything in their power to help finally fulfill the promise of equal pay for equal work. I want to thank uh, my colleagues again for their leadership, and I'm now pleased to yield to the chair of the Subcommittee on Workforce Protections, the gentlelady from North Carolina, Representative Alma Adams. Thank you, uh, Chairman Scott, for your remarks. It's an honor to work together with you on Ed and Labor, because you truly get it. Uh, and thank you to Chair DeLauro, uh, Speaker Pelosi as well, and to our, our senator uh, for all of her support. You've got to have it in both chambers. Uh, Rosa, you've, you've been a tireless fighter for women, and your advocacy for this bill is not only a reflection of your conscience, uh, but of your character. So I thank you for that. And for my entire career, from the North Carolina House uh, to the U.S. House, I've supported equal pay for equal work. It's 2021, folks, and women are still subject to unequal, unfair compensation in the workforce. Uh, this wage gap is even worse for women of color. Black women, for example, earn an average of 63 cents on the dollar compared to men. And this issue persists in nearly every line of work, regardless of your education, your experience, your occupation, your industry, or job title. And if you don't believe that data, take it from me. I've lived it. My mother was a domestic worker. She cleaned other folks' houses so her daughter could one day serve in the United States House of Representatives. She was struggling every day to make ends meet, and sometimes it felt like she was running just to stand still. But that's how much she cared about her family. And that's an important fact to remember about this legislation. It's not only about women. It's also about families. Working hard's not enough if you don't make enough. So when women bring home less money day in and day out, it means that they have less for the everyday needs of their families, their groceries, rent, child care, and doctor's visits. It also means that they have less tucked away for retirement. Two-thirds of mothers are either the sole breadwinner or the co-breadwinner in the household, so their earnings are vital to their families. As a mother, as a grandmother who's worked all of my life, I can tell you that the struggle is real. The Paycheck Fairness Act is an opportunity for Congress to strengthen the Pay Act and bolster the rights of working women and to put an end to the gender-based wage disparity once and for all. We can't continue to rob nearly half of our nation's workforce of the wages they deserve, nor can we continue to force women to work harder just to be paid unfairly. This is an issue of fairness. It's an issue of justice. We've got to do right by women, do right by our families, do right by all of the little boys and the little girls who are counting on their mommy to give them a better life. And it passed the Paycheck Fairness Act. I, I urge the Senate to do that. Uh, thank you again, and I'm happy to now yield to my friend from California's 35th District, Congresswoman Norma Torres. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much, um, Speaker Pelosi, for um, being with us today and being such a champion for all of us women. And also, Senator Murray, thank you so much for coming to the People's House um, to help us lift this piece of legislation. And also to our great chairwoman um, from Appropriations Committee. She's doing such a wonderful job ensuring that all of our legislation focuses on improving the lives of not just working women, but our families as a whole, which we know has such a great impact in our communities. Today, more than 50 years after President Kennedy signed, Kennedy signed the Equal Pay Act into law, women in America earn an average of just 79 cents to every dollar our male counterparts earn. For black women, we've heard 63 cents. For Native American women, 60 cents. For Latinas, like me, it's just 55 cents. 55 cents for every dollar a white male 
takes in. So let me ask you, is my work somehow less important than my male colleague? Do I somehow deserve barely half of the compensation someone else gets for the exact same job? Do I not have to support my household just as much as a man? Latinas lose an average of nearly 30,000 every year. 30,000 every year. That's more than a million over a career lifetime. What would that extra million dollars mean for you that are here? Maybe for that working woman, it would mean that she doesn't have to choose between paying for childcare or buying groceries or not worrying about how to pay for her child's college tuition. Or maybe she could even fulfill the American dream and buy a home. This is something that is very personal to me because I experienced it too. One of my very first jobs was selling pipe valves and fittings. Imagine that. It was a male dominated industry and it didn't matter how well I did. It didn't matter that I was selling millions more than my male counterparts. My paycheck was reflected in the thousands less in the monthly bonus that my colleagues um, earned. So this bill also bans retaliation against workers who speak out about wages. As a very young woman, I shouldn't have had to leave my job to get better pay. I should have had an opportunity to petition my employer for equal pay. Instead, I left and I joined, and I joined another career as a 911 dispatcher where I would often put on my green shirt, my ask me shirt, and go to Sacramento or fly to Congress to ask for equal pay for women, to lobby for working moms like myself. Today, we have a great opportunity to finally pass this bill out of Congress and to hand it over to Senator Murray, who will help us get it through the Senate. And with that, I, and with that, I want to yield over to our great speaker, or, oh, my great colleague in the <laughs> Rules Committee, uh, Congresswoman Deborah Ross. Well, I can't wait to hear from the speaker. Um, so I, I'm a freshman, and I may have uh, only been serving in Congress for a few months, but I've been working on equal pay issues for decades in North Carolina with my colleague, Alma Adams. When I was in the North Carolina General Assembly, I sponsored a statewide Equal Pay Act and a commission to study state salaries. Both measures were blocked by the leadership, Democrat, Democratic leadership and Republican leadership in the assembly. And when I approached a, a powerful senator about bringing the study up, he said to me, we wouldn't, know, we wouldn't want to do that because we know exactly what we would find. It's this attitude that has kept working women in the dark, unable to discuss salaries, organize for equal pay, and fight wage discrimination. Since the study I requested on behalf of one of the longest serving women in the North Carolina General Assembly, I'm here to tell you what we would find when we get the facts. We would find that women still earn only 82 cents for every dollar men make. We would find that more and more women are the sole breadwinners for their families. And we would find that these families are poorer than those with men as the head of household. We would find that tech companies, which have a huge presence in my district, typically offer women 4 to 45% less in starting pay for the same job. We would find that the wage gap is one of the reasons that women leave the tech industry 
contributing to underrepresentation in that field. We would find that because of lower lifetime earnings, women have, on average, only 70% of the retirement income that men have, yet they live longer. We would find that all of these disparities are even wider for women of color. We are here today because Chairwoman DeLauro and Senator Murray have put forward a practical solution to these issues, the Paycheck Fairness Act. It will remedy many of these problems. And in doing so, it will infuse our economy with hundreds of billions of dollars of earnings, cut the national poverty rate for working women in half, and improve the living conditions of millions of children. It's an honor to be here with my distinguished colleagues to support this bill, and I'm hopeful that we will finally guarantee equal pay for equal work in our law. Our future depends on that. And our wonderful speaker, Nancy Pelosi. Well, thank you very much, Representative Ross, for spelling out very clearly the challenge that this has been legislatively at the state and we know at the national level up until now. Thank you for quantifying what it means uh, in terms of dollars and cents, as others have done uh, this afternoon on the floor and here now. Uh, thank you to all of you for translating what that difference means in the lives of America's families. As Congresswoman Torres said, what, it, what a mom could do for her children, what a, mom, a, a mother, a wife could do for the family, and what it means in terms of pension. So I'm here to say thank you. Thank you to Rosa DeLauro. I called her the guardian angel of the women and families on all of the legislation she has put forth. How many Congresses? 13? Yes. 13, con years, she, 13 Congress. For 13 Congresses, she has put this bill forth. So she is persistent, <laughs> and that's what it takes. And to our uh, distinguished chair of the health committee coming over from the Senate, who gives us hope that this can become the law. Thank you for your tremendous leadership, Hattie Murray, in so many ways. Bobby Scott, now you know what it usually means for us to be the only woman in the room. Now he's there. <laughs> there he is, our champion in so many ways. He can do it. He can do it. He's up to it. You didn't wear your pink hat. Uh, Bobby Scott has just been remarkable over the years. Uh, on this subject and many other subjects that relate to the well-being of America's working families and women. And I will say when talking about Bobby Scott about something that Congresswoman Torres said when she put on her green Ask Me shirt, he has worked very closely with fairness in the workplace for women and for workers. I want to salute the labor movement in our country because they have done more for fairness, paycheck fairness than any institution you can name because women in the labor workforce oh, she's gone. <laughs> uh, uh, are much more on a par. And Alma Adams, uh, this week is uh, uh, Black, Black Mortality Black. Week, and she has been every single day uh, guiding our thinking and our values in a stronger way as to the challenge that is still there, but just one of another of the aspects of America's families that she has been a leader on and how beautifully she spoke about what it means uh, for women to have equal pay. Thank you, Alma Adams, uh, for your leadership. Uh, Norma Torres, she's had a lot of jobs. But when she talks, one, one time she talked, she, she said, I used to be uh, get the um, 911 call. So no matter what the subject is, she's been there. She's working a number of jobs along the way. Because when she started, I thought, oh, 911. Oh, no, no. She was selling pipe fittings or something. But anyway, she knows of what she speaks. She's had uh, to work and compete in many arenas and then to be a state senator in California and bring her leadership to the, uh, to the Congress on this very important subject, speaking from her own experience and so beautifully about what it means to families and choices that moms have to make. And then to hear Congresswoman Ross, a freshman member, bringing her experience in the state legislature of North Carolina 
uh, to the Congress. She understands the challenges that women face, and she understands legislatively the challenge that we have faced to get this legislation passed. Ready, uh, uh, effective from the start on many issues, including uh, paycheck fairness. Thank you, Congresswoman Ross. Well, I just want to say thank you to all of you on behalf of my four daughters and my son, mm -hmm. and my son for what you are doing for women, for my granddaughters and for my grandsons, because this fairness issue is not just for what it does for women, it's what it does for families. Boys and girls, as you said, Alma, you said little boys and little girls in your comment, uh, benefit from all of this. Fairness, as I said on the floor, is an American value. It's an American trait. It's something we all agree on. Fairness. Why wouldn't we have fairness for our sisters, our moms, our daughters, our wives, if we're husbands, whatever it is, that they should be valued and not be exploited in the workplace, because this is an exploitation in the workforce place if you're paying somebody less than the value of their work as valued by someone who's a man that they're working with. So this is, again, it's part of so many things that we've been talking about this month in the last few weeks in terms of the Violence Against Women Act, the ERA, the, the rescue plan, which has a, a strong component of child care and the rest. The, the recognition that women are so much a part of our, of our society, of course, but of our economy. And in this Congress, I'd like to see some of our Republican women colleagues on the other side of the aisle say, I'll take 82% of what the salary is of our male counterparts in the Congress. I don't see anybody stepping up to do that if they think that that's okay for other, for other women. But it all comes down to what it means for children, what it means for families, what it means for seniors, what it means to our country but also what it means to our economy, because I do believe that when women succeed, America succeeds. So I thank all of you for your leadership to help women succeed and America succeed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Questions? Yes. Senator Murray, uh, we very rarely have the chance to ask a senator a question like this in a press conference like this. Handicap the real prospects of this making it through the Senate. Are there 10 Republicans who would support a bill like this, and, and who are you talking to to try and, and win them over? Well, that is a really important question. And the first answer is the House is passing this bill today, not just with Democrats, but with Republicans. And that's the message we're now going to start taking to all of our colleagues in the Senate. The Democrats all support it. Uh, and to talk to them about what you heard today. They, the women, um, want should want equal pay for themselves and for the, their constituents. The men should want equal pay for their daughters and their granddaughters and their grandsons and their sons because that's how their families survive. So we will take this victory today from the House and take it over to the Senate and begin to work Republican senators one at a time. As I said in my remarks, every one of those Republicans represent a state where half of their populations are not get, get, uh, don't have access to equal pay. And they should be fighting with us to make sure that that happens. Yeah. Um, Chairman DeLauro, I actually wanted to ask if you might be able to talk a little bit about the timeline for the appropriations process and the spending bills. I know that's also a really important thing that's going on right now. Oh, well, why don't we come back to that if we can, if there are questions that have to do with, uh, with the subject of the day. Yes. My question was on these business groups and I sent a letter to Speaker Pelosi I guess, earlier this week sort of opposed the Paycheck Fairness Act citing it could threaten bonuses and negotiating okay. what your responses you were to that. You're mistaking me for someone else. Perhaps it's the mask. <laughs> you said I threatened? No 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 no, 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 no. Business okay. groups have threatened. Right. Oh, business groups. <laughs> or like they oppose, <laughs> yes. But, and, 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 and the, the speaker will, will also reply, but keep in mind that business groups have been opposed uh, to minimum wage. Uh, they were, uh, you know, just they, the business people have talked about how the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act was going to be 
uh, uh, you, you know, raise all this litigation, untrue. There was a gentleman on the floor today who talked about bonuses. This is, uh, 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 where, where, uh, they, uh, it comes, uh, the Christmas bonuses were at risk. It's a lie. They're not at risk. Well, the Christmas bonuses are. They're go ahead. They may be at risk because you can't give all the men bonuses and not the women. <laughs> yeah. no, so you can't um, give discriminatory bonuses. Yeah. I don't know, Madam Speaker. If well, you, I, you, I, you're getting the letters. Your remarks, I think, well said. You know, so. And I apologize for the mask-induced mixture. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Sometimes it's a little hard with the mask. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I thought you said reference to that. Yeah. Anyway. No, my, my apologies. I'm sorry, ma'am? Did you move? You're still there from the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I just like sit here so no one else can ever have the feeling. <laughs> But we've had all kinds of letters, and all, all and everyone who spoke today on the floor introduced a letter. You know, I introduced one with uh, or hundreds of organizations who are involved in economic opportunity for women uh, who are in support of uh, of, the, of this effort. Most of all, the women of the United States and their families are supportive of the legislation. The voters, we vote. We vote. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay. Thanks. Here, I can go. I'm going back to both too. Although I don't. Yeah. I never move. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Well, I also have a liner. What's that? I also have a liner.